Welcome to Learning with Tembi. It's your economics teacher here, Tembi Nezengane. And as we continue with our learning program, today we're going to do the learning module of aggregates and conversions. And I must again emphasize that our lessons are primarily focused on grade 12 economics with the application of the CAPS curriculum. However, the design of this lesson may also be beneficial to those who wish to understand the concept of gross domestic product and why national aggregate calculations are essential in the economy. Uh, this topic covered today is a uh, part of paper one in economics grade 12. Now coming to the national accounts aggregates, uh, maybe we should talk about the national accounts first. When you talk about national accounts, we are referring to the systems which are used to measure economic activity of a country. And uh, by economic activities, we may be referring to the production of goods and services, their distribution, and also their consumption. In South Africa, the South African Reserve Bank uses the national accounts to calculate the production and expenditure that occurs in the country so that the government can see how the country is performing. And also this allows the government to make informed economic decisions. So we all know that aggregates refers to the totals. So if we're talking about national accounts aggregate, we're actually referring to the total value of economic activities happening in the country. But maybe to give you a broader uh, definition, we may refer to national account aggregate as the total quantity of money or products in an economy that is related to a specific time period. Whether this total is being demanded, supplied, produced, consumed, spent, or received as income. So you can see that uh, the national account aggregate is actually talking about the overall production, the value of production, the value of expenditure, and the value of income within the country. So the most commonly used national account aggregate, uh, which is used to measure the country's level of economic activity, is the gross domestic product, which is commonly known by its acronym, the GDP. So by the GDP, we are referring to the total market value of all finished goods and services within the borders of the country in a given period of time, which is normally a year. So uh, if you can pay a very close attention to the definition of uh, GDP, you can see that we are not just talking about the total number of goods and services which has been produced, but we are talking about the value that those goods and services do have. And also we are talking about goods which have been produced within the borders of the country. National account aggregates may either be addressing production expenditure or income and i have mentioned that one of the most common national account aggregate used is the gdp but that is not the only one we also have the aggregate expenditure as well as the aggregate income so the aggregate expenditure it is the national account aggregate that shows the total amount spent by all sectors of an economy in a particular period of time by all sectors, we are referring to all the participants of the economy. If I can just refresh your memories uh, back to the circular flow model, we spoke of four, four participants of the economy, which was household, government, businesses, and also the foreign sector in an open economy. So the national account aggregate of um, expenditure is actually showing the total amount spent by household, by the government, by businesses, and also the foreign sector. Then the national uh, account aggregate of income shows the total amount earned by all producers in the economy in a particular period of time. 
So that is the total amount earned by households when they sell their factors of production. The amount, total amount earned by the government as they receive the taxes and also the amount earned by firms and the foreign sector. And um, if you can recall in our discussion of leakages and injections, we said the economy may be in an equilibrium. And when the economy is in equilibrium, aggregate expenditure is equal to aggregate income. And also, this may also be equal to the overall production that has been made. So this is our third uh, national account aggregate that we have already spoken about, which is the GDP. With that being said, this tells us that we have three ways or three methods for us to calculate the GDP, meaning that we can calculate the GDP using the expenditure method, or we can calculate the GDP using the income method, or we can also calculate the GDP using the production method. Okay, before we get through to the methods of calculating the GDP, I think we should pass through the aggregate expenditure and the aggregate income and maybe give you guys a practical examples uh, uh, of how we calculate the aggregate expenditure and the aggregate income. Like we have said that the aggregate expenditure represents the total amount spent by all sectors of an economy in a particular period of time, then it means that we are referring to the expenditure made by all the participants of the economy. Therefore, the equation that we're going to use here will include expenditure made by each participant of the economy. The first one being the consumption expenditure. Consumption expenditure refers to the value of all spending that, is, that has been made by households on goods and services. Secondly, we're going to add the investment spending by businesses, which refers to the total value of all spending which has been made by businesses on capital goods. Thirdly, we will add the government spending, and the government spending refers to the expenditure made by the public sector on goods and services. Then we will also add the spending made by foreigners on South African goods, and that is uh, the exports or the money that we receive from exports. And lastly, we will have to subtract money which South Africans spend on foreign goods, or we can say on imports. So we subtract imports because when you spend on imports, you will be taking money outside the economy. So basically, this is the equation that you're going to use to calculate the aggregate expenditure. And in short, this is how we're going to present it. We're going to say expenditure is equal to consumption plus government spending plus investment spending plus the exports subtract the imports. Now, let me just give you an example of how we calculate the aggregate expenditure when given specific information. So here's an example. It says here, given the following values, calculate the aggregate expenditure of South Africa. So you are given that the consumer spending by household is 300,000 million rand, and then the investment spending by businesses is 250,000 million rand. And uh, we've got uh, a government spending, which is uh, an amount of 120,000 million rent. And the foreign sector on um, export expenditure is 100,000 rent. And um, expenditure on imports uh, resulted to 150,000 million rents. We are deriving that uh, the millions are indicated in the table there that. Um, we are going to calculate them, or the unit value of the amounts given there is a million rand. So how do we approach such a question? The first thing that you have to do is to indicate which formula you are using to calculate the aggregate expenditure. And the formula that we're going to use here is the expenditure is equal to consumption expenditure plus 
government expenditure plus investment spending by businesses plus the exports minus imports. Then you will take in the values which are there or which has been given. So our consumption expenditure there is 300,000. The government spending there is 120,000. And please note that it's not always the case that you might find that these values are given in an order that corresponds to the equation or to the formula. So please do assign the values to the correct um, to the correct uh, value. Do assign the, the correct values to the correct entity, if I may put it that way. So our total here is going to be um, 620,000 million rands. And it's also important to write the unit value because you have been given that these amounts are written in a million rand value. So aggregate income is more like aggregate expenditure. We're just going to use the same formula, but I will tell you where they differ. Because we said in equilibrium, uh, aggregate income is equal to aggregate expenditure. So here the aggregate income will have the same formula as the aggregate uh, expenditure. So our aggregate income will be equal to consumption expenditure plus investment spending by business plus government spending plus spending by foreigners on South African goods, that is um, the exports, then minus spending by South Africans on foreign goods, which is the imports. So now the formula will differ in this sense. Y denotes an, an aggregate income, whereas E uh, denotes an aggregate expenditure. So we are going to say Y is equal to C plus G plus I plus X minus M. And that is going to be our formula to calculate the aggregate income. Now we are going to do a practical example of calculating an aggregate income. Now let us try to work out the calculation of an aggregate income. Let's uh, look at our example here. Here it says uh, you, you use the information which is in the table to calculate the aggregate income. And the information that you are given you, given the export income, and we, we know that export income refers to the money which has been received from export sales. Then we have consumer spending, that is the expenditure made by household. Then we've been given an import expenditure, and that is expenses on foreign goods by South Africans. Then we also have government spending, which is referring to, of course, uh, public expenditure or public sector expenditure on public goods and services. Then we have marginal propensity to consume, which I am yet to explain about when we head to the topic of the multiplier. Then we are given investment spending. Now what you are asked to do is to calculate the aggregate income. Um, you are given the marginal propensity to consume there. And you know very well, according to the equation or the formula that you're supposed to use, to calculate aggregate income. Nowhere does it state that you should um, write the marginal propensity to consume or you should involve it in, in your calculations. So therefore we are going to ignore the marginal propensity to consume which you are given and you stick to your formula to say your income is equal to consumption expenditure plus government spending plus investment spending by businesses plus exports minus imports. So that is going to be uh, what you're going to calculate and you are going to ignore the marginal propensity to consume. And the final answer there is going to be 330 million rands. That will be your aggregate income. Let me take you through the graphical representation of the aggregate expenditure and the aggregate income without uh, or not related to any specific amounts of GDP 
or of expenditure. So our graph will look like this. Uh, our x-axis will represent the national income, or you can call it the aggregate income or the GDP. Then our y-axis will be representing the aggregate output or the aggregate expenditure. So the line which is labeled Z there is our aggregate output curve, or also we can say is our aggregate income curve. And this is where our aggregate expenditure is equal to aggregate income. This line is our macroeconomic equilibrium. It is representing a state at which the economy is in equilibrium. So one can ask themselves what uh, the equation Y equal to C plus S means. So Y is representing your income. The C there is representing the consumption and the S is representing the savings. What does that mean? It means that with the income that you receive, a part of your income, you will consume it and part of your income, the other part of your income, you're going to save it. So your income is made up of the money that you decide to consume as well as the money that you decide to save. So basically this is how the graph will look like without any amounts attached to it. The rest will be explained as we introduce to you the topic of the multiplier. And now our next lesson is going to cover the three methods of calculating the GDP. And that is the expenditure method, the income method, and also the production method. Thank you for joining this lesson. Um, if you do wish to arrange for a one-on-one -on -one lesson in any of the economics topics, specifically on grade 12, you are welcome to send us an email on uh, tembinezingane at gmail.com or you can just call 079-674-5767. Thank you once again.